<laughs> I'm the only one who has been right about this. It is amazing. It is awesome. You guys are in the right place, and that place is Comic Artist Pro Secrets. You're listening to me, Ethan Van Skyver, 28-year veteran of the comic book industry. So I've been talking about what's going on at DC Comics for about a year and a half. Uh, the purchase um, by AT&T of Warner Media, Time Warner, and then all of the stuff that comes with it, the vestigial tale that is DC Comics Publishing. AT&T couldn't possibly be less interested, and they've made that so very, very clear. Uh, over the past year by basically firing all of the executives over there, firing everybody, and then slashing their publishing line down uh, to just a little tiny fraction of what they were publishing before. Denial has been a thing, though. Uh, denial is not just a river in Egypt. Denial is thick in the thick heads of these thick SJWs uh, who uh, currently refuse to take any responsibility for the decline in comic book sales. Uh, which are not the cause of what's going on here, but certainly aren't helping. AT&T is looking uh, at what the comic book industry is able to generate in terms of just, you know, dollars, dollars and cents. And they just don't think it's worth the time or energy to actually produce comics anymore. And uh, I have said and faced ridicule and faced non-believers, faced people who told me I was just flat out wrong, uh, AT&T is going to divest itself of DC Comics uh, publishing, the publishing arm, uh, and that is that. Now, does it mean that they're going to get rid of Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, uh, all of their characters? No, of course not. They're going to hang on to all of those incredibly valuable properties. They're just not, listen, they're just not going to publish comic books anymore. <gasps> oh my God, a world without DC Comics. Uh, it is uh, stunning, but that is where we are headed right now. Uh, I have been saying this now for a year and a half, uh, I've been met with ridicule even by Jim Lee, the president of DC Comics, who said uh, that DC Publishing is going to go on for another 84 years. Well, it might, uh, but if it does, it's going to happen somewhere other than uh, where they are currently being published at AT&T. It is not going to be uh, AT&T or Time Warner or DC Films or any of the uh, the actual working uh, companies, factions within AT&T uh, that are going to help support publishing DC superhero comic books anymore. They're going to license out the characters. Uh, Bleeding Cool actually confirms it right now. Well, look at this. DC Comics has had one hell of a rough year. They fired their publisher, which everybody cheered. Everybody was excited about that. Do you remember you dummies uh, out there who were excited about Dan DiDio being fired? Uh, two editors-in-chief and many staffers who had been at the company for decades uh, with more expected. And in the meantime, uh, they also uh, started publishing bizarre YA novels uh, that have made them the laughing stock of the Internet. So that's uh, that's been fun as well. Uh, all this happened as a result of the AT&T buyout of Warners. Now, this is a fact that I didn't know. Um, Diane Nelson. Uh, Diane Nelson. Again, uh, you know, great big SJW. I'm so glad she's gone. Uh, she was a pill. Uh, it was her decision to move DC Comics from New York, uh, where they were located right across the street from David Letterman's, uh, well, I guess David Letterman's not there anymore, but uh, uh, the Ed Sullivan Theater. They were right across the street from Ed Sullivan's classic theater, uh, and they uh, were there for a long time. That was their office space, and suddenly they packed up, and they moved from Manhattan to the insanely expensive uh, offices in Burbank, California. Uh, so they were in Los Angeles, and apparently that was a lot of money. That was a big, big uh, step up. Actually, if you visited both offices, uh, the New York offices were modest. I mean, look, they're located in downtown Manhattan, and that's prime real estate. But if you go in there, it wasn't that impressive. You know, I mean, it was just kind of a, a normal office building. Uh, meanwhile, uh, their offices in Burbank, California are like a museum of awesomeness. If you love DC Comics superhero characters, uh, you go there and you go on a tour and it is, it's like a, it's a museum more than a, a, a business place. It actually uh, is fun to be in. It's decorated. It's set up. It's, it's ornate. Uh, so uh, evidently that was very expensive. Thank you, Diane Nelson. Uh, the move from coast to coast succeeded in making DC work better as part of Warner's as a whole, uh, with many projects spinning out of that increased proximity. But it also brought greater financial pressure on every project, including the publication of comic books. And that proximity was entirely absent this year uh, because Warner's, of course, 
continued to work remotely. Uh, everything was closed down. There's no reason to have this very expensive real estate when you're not really using it. Uh, and the comic books that you're publishing uh, have been slashed. Now, uh, Rich Johnson goes on here to talk about how uh, DC Comics is actually charging more for their comics uh, now and uh, publishing fewer of them and is actually doing okay. I mean, they're making more money per comic book than they were before, uh, but there's still a real problem and there's just no reason uh, to uh, to stay there. Here we go. They're holding out hope. Maybe Infinite Frontier number zero uh, is going to fix everything for DC. Yeah, well, uh, you know, wish in one hand and crap in the other. See which piles up first. Uh, last year, here's the here's the news. This is what you guys were hoping to hear. A lot of you said, well, maybe Todd McFarlane will come in uh, and purchase um, DC Comics, or maybe Marvel will. Uh, you know, Marvel Comics will come in and purchase DC Comics and publish these comics. Uh, no and no. Uh, but check this out. Last year, a number of high-rolling individuals were given tours of DC Comics Burbank uh, with AT&T Warner's officials, and as a result, there may be some new options. Uh, Bleeding Cool has been made aware of plans by big-time DC Comics fans. That's a strange turn of phrase there. But fans. Fans, huh? Uh, with access to lots of money. M many millions uh, from across many businesses. A collaboration of some of the biggest cheeses who, with a combination of personal wealth and raised capital, are making an approach to AT&T. Not to buy DC Comics outright. Uh, not the movies, obviously. We have to make this clear because... There are some people who don't understand that, you know, look, the comic books are just a licensed product, not unlike a t-shirt or a balloon or a pair of socks with Batman on them. Uh, they still own Batman whether or not they are putting out Batman socks. Uh, they're using Batman in other media all the time now, uh, and retaining the trademark is not as difficult as it used to be in, say, the 1980s or the 1970s. Uh, Batman has transcended comic books. He's everywhere. They don't need to publish comic books uh, anymore. Uh, all right, so who? Who would do this? Who has this kind of money? Um, and you're left to speculate. Now, I will tell you two people uh, are currently bidding uh, on... The, they're keeping it secret here. I don't know why. Uh, two people are bidding right now to become the new publishers of DC Comics. Uh, one of them is Steve Jeppe, uh, the owner of Diamond Distribution. Uh, he is somebody who has wanted uh, to do this for a long time, and he's one of these high rollers. Uh, Rich kind of obliquely references it here. He says uh, they have copies of Action Comics number one, Detective Comics number 27, Despair. You're meant to immediately go to Steve Jeppe, who owns the museum, the comic book museum in... Uh, uh, Baltimore. It has everything. He's got all of these beautiful representations uh, of some of the most expensive and rare collectible comics in the world. Uh, that's what Steve Jeppe's known for. So uh, here is uh, Rich Johnson explaining that Steve Jeppe is one of the people who is bidding uh, on this. And I will tell you that Steve Jeppe has had a deal in place uh, that he is uh, one of the first people who will be contacted uh, to bid on the DC Comics uh, license should it ever come up for bid. And they are closing, let me say this again, they are closing down DC Comics. There is no reason to be in denial. Don't be mad at me in the comments. Uh, there are a few of you who are like, no, you're wrong. I'm not wrong, I've been right all along. They are closing down DC Comics. There are now individuals uh, who recognize that DC Comics is for sale and they are trying to buy it. Okay, so just... <laughs> oh... Let that break your heart. Let that sink in if it needs to uh, and move on. Now, the other person who is bidding more actively and is more likely to actually be able to make this purchase is dun, 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 Robert Kirkman, creator of The Walking Dead. Uh, this is a guy who is worth many, 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 many millions of dollars uh, and has the finances and has uh, everything that he needs to uh, be the publisher uh, of the DC Comics characters. Uh, I understand, uh, two sources have let me know, uh, that Robert Kirkman is one of the main people uh, who was putting up fat wads of cash uh, to perhaps become the publisher of Superman, Batman, Flash, and Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, and uh, maybe Aquaman. Just don't let Kelly Sue DeConnick uh, write Aquaman again. She's going to ruin it. Uh, that's what's going on right now, guys. How do you feel about The Walking Dead meets DC Comics? Because that is right on the horizon. Let me know in the comments below what you think. 
uh, of this video, what you think of the idea of Robert Kirkman owning uh, DC Comics, and uh, I read all your comments. I'm very interested in what you guys have to say. Make sure to back Cyberfrog Wrecked Planet, uh, back Rainbow the Brute, back Snowman, uh, A Cold Day in Hell, and my new campaign, Trent Canuga's Creed Reimaginary 1 and 2. Just launched it last night. It's doing amazing right out of the gate. Uh, subscribe, join my Patreon, all of that stuff. You guys are the best. I'll be back again soon with another video, uh, probably an update on uh, more of the death of DC Comics. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Hey, you want to follow me on Twitter? Are you sure? Well, if so, I'm at Ethan Van Skyver. That's at Ethan Van Skyver. See you there. Hey, I got a P.O. Box. Want to send me some mail? Send it to Ethan Van Skyver. P.O. Box 607, Marlton, New Jersey, 08053. And I'll probably open it up on the live stream. Thanks very much, everyone. New from all caps comics, Rainbow the Brute, the last real man in Fairyland, a tale of prismatic pain, a spectrum of brutality, and a pretty good dad. Choke slam a unicorn by backing it today, only on Indiegogo. New from all caps comics, Snowman, a cold day in hell. The victim of a genocidal massacre has somehow returned from the dead and is carving a path of death across the heart of America. Driven by the echoes of silent screams, this is the story of a man once known as Black Dog, the one now forever known as the Snowman. Snowman, a cold day in hell, back it today, only on Indiegogo.